project is a free fitness group. Started in Boston. It started as like a dare. I dare you to actually work out in November when it's cold and gross. But they challenge each other to stay on top of their fitness. You know, it started out pretty small and people began to show up in numbers and... More people started joining, the word got out, friends inviting friends. And then before they knew it, they had this movement. And I think that's really what it's become now, is a group of people trying to hold each other accountable to just show up and to move. I grew up in a very small town in northern Wisconsin, population a little over 800 people. My family, from the moment I can remember, never fit in. We were always the family that people were bullying, making fun of. I didn't like going to school. I didn't like being out in public. I didn't speak at all. People really did think I was a mute. I was born four years after the Chernobyl accident uh, that happened in 1986 in Ukraine, and that's what kind of caused me being born with disabilities. You know, I wasn't able to do what, what my friends could do, which is running or, or other fitness activities. Because if you're disabled, you're typically being hidden. I didn't really understand my own identity to be that of a transgender man until after college. When I was thinking about transition, I thought about all of the things that most people in this position think about in terms of how will other people act or react. But for me, a big piece of this was the athletic component. And I did a lot of research and, and you know, I was just looking for somebody else out there who identified as a trans man and was competing against men. And in all of my searching, I found no one. I found no examples of anyone else who had ever done this. About three years ago, I had a pretty big shift in my life. The person that I was dating, we broke up, I lost my job, and I had to move. And all three of those things happened at once. Everything is turned upside down. And I was just, like, lost. I'm an optimist and a dreamer. And when you grow up in a tough situation and when you have no self-confidence, it's like the worst position to be in because I'm constantly dreaming of something better and in the back of my mind knowing that it's probably not gonna happen. I always force myself to go to school. That's how a person can grow is by putting themselves in uncomfortable situations. I got a summer job working at the library and this guy, he was constantly in the library um, with his radio never thought anything to it and um, felt like he was following me like the whole summer and then uh, one day he sexually assaulted me in the library then that was before my freshman year of high school suicide unfortunately was a very common thing where I grew up I've known so many people have committed suicide so in the back of my mind I always thought that's a, the easy way of escaping this life. I went for a walk late at night, had a knife with me. I was sitting on a dirt pile on the road. And was ready to end my life until the police came and they drew their weapons on me and talked me down. Running was the only thing in my life that I had control over. Because I could control where I went, and how far I went, and who I went with, and what I wore, and what music I chose, and I could go in any direction. I used that as like a moving meditation and a compass to kind of figure stuff out and just say, you know what? Just keep moving forward. Just keep moving forward. Keep moving. I've been on the bench since 2013. Fitness wasn't something that was always a part of my life. I had ballooned up to 287 pounds 
You know, the guy at work who always called me big guy. You wonder if he even knew my name. I am a two-time Olympian. I went to the London Olympics in 2012, and before that, the Beijing Olympics in 2008. And that was my life, but that life ends. And when that life ends, something else has to come up. Ultimately, I just decided that I needed to be comfortable in the rest of my life, and if I lost sport, then that would have to be what happened, because living my day-to-day -day sort of existence in that body and as that person was really kind of becoming detrimental to me. Before, I was able to hide my legs by wearing pants, but with running blades, you can't really do that because the blades are just a bit too big, and so, I had to open up, I had to tell people, well, this is who I am. And that's when my confidence went up, and that's when I realized, I am who I am, let's do this. <laughs> So I peaked my weight at 312 pounds after coming to Boston. I knew I needed to change something. There was no one thing, but it's just an accumulation of so many things that for me, I wanted to do something, I had to do something, and I started going to spin classes, and I was too heavy to get up out of the saddle. One day I finally felt confident enough, I got up and, and broke the spin bike. And it was humiliating and I had to decide what it was that I was gonna do. Was I gonna just get off and walk away? Was, was I done? Um, and I, I, mean, I, I thought about it for a second, and I got, to be honest, angry. And so I got off and I got on the next spin bike. And it was that weekend, my wife and I went out and we, uh, we bought me a road bike, and I started cycling. I decided to tackle a little challenge to myself. I decided to try and do 14 half marathons in 2014. But as I'm running, it's kind of like, once you do that every day, it kind of gets boring. My first half marathon, I ran by myself, finished by myself, left by myself, and kind of felt lonely. I was like, man, this sure would be nice to just have people to run with. started joining everything. I joined a knitting group. <laughs> I joined Black Girls Run. And I previously didn't run with people. I would run with like one other person, but I didn't run in groups. I didn't work out in groups. I didn't even, at that time, belong to a gym. I joined um, the November Project. Suddenly, I'm a part of all of these groups because I had to completely shift my social network. When I first moved down to San Francisco, I was initially nervous about like not getting to the mountains or like kind of being stuck in the city. Like I didn't have a mode of transportation. My good friend Sam was down here. Like, I was really honest with Sam. I was like, I'm, you know, I'm nervous about like kind of feeling stagnant in the city. And and she had started coming to this Nova Project workout. She was like, I just met this, you know, group of people that I, are really active. I don't think she said anything really about the workouts. Like it was just like, I think I, I think I have friends now. My whole life, I always wanted to be included. I've always wanted to be part of a community. I've always wanted to be part of a group. And I was never given that opportunity. I saw it on social media and I was scared to attend because people are in crazy good shape and here I am like way out of shape. I didn't want to be judged because I was slow. And then decided to give it a go on a Wednesday in June and we walk up the steps to the entrance of the stadium and um, a lot of people had their shirts off. Everyone was in crazy good shape. I was by far the largest person there that day and I'm like, this isn't happening, we have to go. Like, I'm so uncomfortable. Kitty was very uncomfortable. We need to leave. We shouldn't be around these people. I was really self-conscious when I first came, particularly being 
you know, a woman of color in her 40s with three kids. I'm looking around, I'm like, there are not a lot of people like me. I was really worried when I first started going to November Project how people would accept me there because I'm transgender. I was really hesitant to, to let people in on that part of my life. It was sort of a social experiment of just showing up and, and being a guy. Then, you know, they did the bounce and everything, and then Brogan's like, let's go downstairs underneath. We'll have a newbie meeting. If you're brand new, follow me out the exit. Everyone else get to the bottom. Let's get ready to go. So we're like, all right, let's just stick through the newbie meeting. We'll see how that goes. So this is November Project. My name is Brogan. BG being so goofy and everything kind of brings this level of easiness to them. So I grew up in Wisconsin. It's kind of a friendly place where we believe in holding doors for people that you don't know. Yeah. All right, maybe I should stay to see what this is about because he's kind of like making me feel comfortable in this very uncomfortable situation. There's got to be something to this. After the newbie meeting, we started to do some sections and it was probably one of the hardest things I've ever done. People that had already finished, you know, they're coming back and, you know, people that are in incredible shape. They're saying, hey, you can do it, you know, good job. And I'm like, does he mean it? Does this person mean it? Are they being genuine? That's right. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And multiple people did. I'm like, this is unbelievable. Like, this has never happened to me. Like, people are encouraging me to go. And Great job. Great job. Great job. that's what really carried me through that workout is having people like high-five me and telling me I can do it because I've never experienced that before. I've never had someone tell me I can do something. I've only had people tell me I can't do something. someone like me that didn't run at all, didn't work out at all, and you go to these workouts with people that were former Olympians or college athletes, you are working out together and you're supporting each other. So look at me, I'm six foot two, I'm 310 pounds. I don't have a problem with finishing last. It motivates me to kind of catch up with them. All of the workouts are really designed so that you can do them whatever your fitness level. No matter where you're at, there's something for you to do. You realize pretty quickly that this is just an open and welcoming community, whatever your level of fitness. We're all capable of anything, and the November Project is showing that. I like November Project because it's a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> I think that it's a little different than the training that I do as a triathlete, as a do athlete. That it's just fun. One of my first weeks here, I think we did a would you rather workout. Like that's not something you get to do in college track. It was making the the difficulty of the workout fun. And I loved that. <laughs> Come on, Deej! Good job you guys! Looking good! It's just another way to challenge my body, challenge my legs challenge others around me. Typically, it's always been about me. Let's help Tanya. Hey, let's get Tanya through this. And then now it's me helping others. It is this like scary, weird group of people that you wouldn't expect to hang out in street clothes, but you put on your workout clothes and you're all of a sudden all equal. Come on, let's go. I know this is going to sound cheesy, but I think it makes our city stronger. You meet people that you never would have expected to be friends. That opens up the possibility of, oh, this is what this city has to offer beyond my comfort zone, beyond my work, beyond my home. From the first person that finishes to the last person that finishes, and everyone in between, they're there to support you and vice versa, you're there to support other people. Come on, man. Yeah. You got it. All right, good job. Go, yeah, you go, man. Go, man. Yeah. Good job, everyone. Part of me just wanted to 
be a normal guy. Switch my pronouns, switch categories and races, start fresh, and just be, here's Chris, he's a great athlete. And part of me wanted to make it so that anybody else who was out there wondering if a trans athlete could compete after a medical transition would have somebody else to look to. I had to think about it a lot of, of whether or not I'd sort of publicly make that statement. The lock screen on my phone says, be who you needed when you were younger. I wanna be the person that I wish that I had 10 years ago, 15 years ago, to make it easier for other people. And after my first Ironman race, I wrote an article about my experience as a transgender athlete. And that was it. I knew that once it was published, you know, once it's online, I will forever be the trans athlete. That was the first time that I received really positive feedback from not just New York City, but the entire November Project community. Like now I can train harder, focus more on competition than focusing on hiding parts of myself because of my discomfort. I felt like I had to work so hard to make my community here in New York until November Project. How do you make friends when you're an adult? It's really hard. <laughs>Sam hadn't even known these girls for that long at this point and was like already being invited on these like insane runs and backpacking trips and adventures. I think I was just excited. I was like, I had an in like because they loved Sam and I was like, oh this is awesome. Like I think I can like get to know these women too. It's not about doing burpees or being there for fitness. It's about like caring about people and like having this community of people that care about each other. There are days where it is seemingly impossible to get out of your warm little cocoon and get to a workout. When it's cold or rainy, I mean, typically people just want to snuggle up in bed and continue sleeping. It's so easy to make excuses, and you can make excuses because it's too cold or it's too warm or it's raining or whatever. Or you could just say, you know, I'm going to go do it. Weatherproof is a staple in a verbal project. Being weatherproof is the idea that like, hey, we're gonna be out here doing it no matter what. Whether it's raining, snowing, sunny, cloudy, you know that there will be a workout, there will always be a group there. If you plan for it, you can do it. If you plan for the rain or the weather, you can do it. I personally like when the weather's really bad, just because it makes me feel much more of like a badass. Hey, like check out my frozen eyelashes underneath my buff. That kind of energy, I think it's become this like culture and Guinness momentum that's just like, hey, it's badass to be weatherproof. Hey, it's it's cool to like show up no matter what. November Project never being canceled lets people know we will be here for you. And you might have a bad week, but we'll be here for you when you get back. We'll be here every single week. November Project when everything else is moving, like is solid. I think after Sam died, like, the community was incredible for me. Knowing I could show up on Wednesdays or Mondays or Fridays and, like, either be sobbing or ecstatic or any range in between made all the difference. These people just, like, stepped up. Whether they knew me or not, whether they knew Sam or not, they knew she was the November Project and that made her family. The most amazing thing is when you know in a huge group of people across the country, a group of people in Boston or Canada or abroad, like, you know, have you if you need anything. You know, if I see people who are having a, having a hard day for whatever reason, you know, the best
best motivator for me is to motivate somebody else. Even if you were the supportee at one point, you become the supporter. <laughs> the whole just show up thing is is beyond beyond real. I think the like term just show up is really nice for mornings, but like people also like really show up in life when you need it. As an Olympian, I think you're doing a disservice to yourself and to others if you do just stop. Because of the experience that you're getting, you are in a unique position where you can give back to the people around you. You can give back what you've learned. You don't have to prove yourself to anybody. You don't have to prove yourself to yourself anymore. But I also need to show that it doesn't just end once you hit one goal. It's more than just doing it once, it's doing it every day. This person impressed me today especially. Here at my office, most of us have fairly sedentary jobs. And so I decided that I would start running the stairs in front of my own courthouse at noon on Fridays. Nobody's in a suit, everybody's in workout clothes, and you're interacting with each other just on a, on a human level. Hold on, Limbo, you got this. I'm usually a soft-spoken, well-reserved person. Outside of an MP setting, I'm usually the guy that just likes to relax, um, not be as talkative. But when it comes to November Project workouts, I don't mind being the guy that's yelling at people. I don't mind screaming at the top of my lungs. Looking good, Ontario! It lets you break out of the shell that you may have been in. If my training goes well, I could be the first above knee, below knee, bilateral in particular for full marathon. So it's, it's, it's a pretty big goal. But here's the thing, if I don't get this goal, I would be fine. If somebody gets it before me, that would be just fine. But, you know, I like to dream big, so. I've been in a position now where I've won my age group with men. I've won races overall with men. But I think a lot of that comes from having the confidence to fully be myself now. In June 2015, I became the first transgender man to make a men's U.S. national team. There's now an opportunity for trans kids to fall in love with the sport and not have to compromise their identity as a person or as an athlete. And you know, we'll see transgender Olympians not too far off in the future because now this door is open. I think that I work out not for me. I do it for me, but I don't feel selfish doing it. I do it because my son says, Mom, you're gonna live to 100. We need to model movement for our children. If I can give back in, in that way, but also follow my passion and model for my kids how important movement and health is, then I wanna do that. Since starting November Project, I have athletically I've done seven marathons. Never did I ever imagine that I could get to this point. Yes, the cards were stacked against me, but I always dreamt of getting to a place where I could truly be happy and I finally reached it. Before this, it didn't matter what my dreams were, they were never gonna come to fruition, right? And now I have a completely different mindset. I'm not depressed. I have all the self-confidence in the world that I can do whatever I want to. I want to be a better person. I want to give myself bigger goals because I know I can attain them. Get closer. Come closer. Bring it in. You guys are not close enough. It's getting tight. So we're going to start this workout with a little bit of a bounce. That was good. Light up that. So I want you guys to repeat after me.
Até a próxima.